Hello everyone and welcome to this Tinker Shop tutorial. My name is Martin from the Innisfil Idea Lab and Library and today we're going to be going over how to create a laser engravable version of a handprint. So this is something we get a lot of requests for um, especially around like Mother's Day and Father's Day. People want to engrave their child's handprint as a nice little gift for family members. And so to do this, first you're going to want to um, get your handprint. So the best and easiest way is to just buy some black acrylic paint from the dollar store and just press your child's hand into the paint and then press it onto several pieces of white printer paper. Usually you want to get you know a few handprints and then you can pick the best one. And then after that, just use a scanner to scan the print into a digital um, image, so a JPEG or a PNG. If you don't have access to a scanner, there are scanning apps that you can download and scan the handprint with your phone. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna wanna do is um, open up Inkscape. And so I'm gonna start a new file, I'm gonna go Open it up, file, new, and we'll just work off this blank file. So the first thing you're going to want to do is import your, your handprint, so the scan that you made of your handprint. So I'm going to go into file and um, import. Select my handprint and click open. And then if you get this messaging here, just click OK. And then there we go. So we've imported our handprint. And so it, mine came in like sideways here. So I can click up here on this arrow to rotate it 90 degrees to the right. And so the handprint is now in the right orientation. Okay, great. So the next thing is we could um, just engrave this handprint as is, but um, it does have like a slightly, like the not 100% white background. It's kind of like a gray off-white and we don't want to engrave that. And if I zoom in by holding control or on Mac would be the command key. So I'm gonna hold control and scroll forward on my mouse wheel. As I zoom in really close, you can see all the pixels that make up this image. Um, a JPEG and a PNG are called a bitmap. That's the type of image it is, which means it's made up of pixels. And as you zoom in and those pixels expand, they become larger and the edges of your image look fuzzy. Um, so why this is not ideal for laser engraving is it'll engrave the fuzziness. Um, and it will also probably engrave a little bit of this off-white um, background that we got from the paper. So what we can do fairly easily in Inkscape is create a higher resolution copy of this image, um, specifically a vector copy. So a vector is a different type of image that instead of using square pixels, it uses um, coordinates and points to map out and draw the outline of your image. So we're going to convert this bitmap copy of our handprint to a vector copy. So to do that, you're going to make sure your image is selected. So we click on it and we're going to go in the top menu under path and select trace bitmap. Okay, so we get this trace bitmap window. Now, if you have like a nice, um, black on white image, you won't have to worry about any of these settings. If you couldn't find black 
um, ink or paint. Uh, maybe you had to use like dark blue or something. You could increase this threshold a bit to pull out some of those lighter colors. Um, but you can play around with that and run several traces till you get, you know, the best vector copy. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and click OK, which will execute the trace. And it should take a moment. You see, we got a preview here, and our vector copy should pop up over top. Yeah, there we go. So I'm gonna close this trace bitmap window, and we now have a vector copy right over top of the original bitmap. So I'm gonna click and drag that over. Um, now, if you're using like an older computer, um, that tracing function it does take a lot of like computer resources to execute. So um, just, just be patient and, and wait it out, it will work. Um, and you can see on this vector copy, it's a lot darker and if I zoom in, you can see that the edges of the image are just 100% clear. Um, and that's because it's not using pixels, it's using coordinates um, to map out the image and I can inspect the nodes or coordinates of the vector image if I use this edit paths tool which I somehow sometimes will call like the node tool so if you click on it and it'll take a second but whoa you can see all of these little nodes that create our image and there's so many of them. Let's zoom in on one part of our image. And we can see, so all of these nodes are all connected with a specified curve that together create the outline of each of the parts of our image. So that's why it takes a moment to do the trace because it's a lot of computations that the program um, needs to make. Um, and one of the things we can do, you can see on the original I had like a little black drop of paint and that came through when it traced. So that's right over here. While using this paths tool, I can actually like click and delete the nodes of this or just click and drag around them to select all of these nodes and then press delete to get rid of it completely. So you can spend some time um, cleaning up the image if you want. Um, however like a few little specks of black here and there probably aren't gonna be super noticeable. Um, so that's great. I'm going to click back to the selection tool. And there we go. And so now I just have a nice clear um, vector representation of our original handprint. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the original. Just click on it and press delete. And there you go, you have your laser engravable handprint. All right, so now that we have our laser engravable handprint, it's time to set it up to engrave on our material, which is gonna look different depending on you know what your project is. Um, you know, some people will come in with like their own pre-cut piece of wood that they just want to engrave the handprint on or maybe you have like a little wooden box that you want to engrave the handprint on the top. Um, if you're just engraving it on a pre-cut piece of wood, all you got to do is um, set up this doc, your document here, that's the rectangle in the corner. You want to set its dimensions to be equal to your material. So by default, this is just like an eight and a half by 11 inches or something, you know, a standard piece of paper. And so let's say you're engraving it on an eight inch by eight inch piece of wood. Well, we would go ahead and change 
the, the document to be eight inches by eight inches. So let's quickly go ahead and do that as an example. So you would go into file and then document properties and then drag the document properties window over. And you're in the middle here, we can see you can set a custom size. So make sure you have inches selected under units and then just fill in these width and height values. So the width is gonna be eight and the height is gonna be eight with our hypothetical piece of wood. And then I'm gonna press enter and then I can close this window and you can see that our document is now a square and it's eight by eight inches. Okay, so then what you would do is place your handprint in the middle of the page and you can perfectly center it. If you really wanted to, you don't want to eyeball it, you can go to object and then align and distribute and then select relative to page and then click these two buttons, the first to center on the vertical axis and then the second to center on the horizontal axis. Great, so now that is perfectly centered on to our page. All right, so that's pretty good, um, but what if instead of, like we didn't have our own piece of wood and we wanted to engrave this and cut out a square or a rectangle and maybe add some text and make sort of like, it could be like a, like a Father's Day card or something like that. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. We'll need to add a cut line and then add some text. So to add a cut line, we're gonna, we're gonna create a rectangle with a rectangle tool. So we click that and then we just click and drag to draw a rectangle. Now my rectangle is like, um, green with a red stroke around it. When you draw a rectangle, it might be a different color. It, it depends, you know, the default I think is like black, but it, it will default back to whatever you last used. Um, but we're gonna change these fill and stroke settings anyway, so don't really worry about that. Um, so what we have to do is get rid of the infill, because right now this rectangle is covering our hand and we wanna just keep the stroke and we'll set the stroke to a specific dimension that the laser engraver will interpret as a cut line. So I'll, I'll show you how to do that. So we're gonna go into object, fill and stroke. Okay, and then I'm just gonna close this align and distribute window. And we have the fill and stroke options here. So there's three tabs, fill, stroke, and stroke style. So for fill, we're gonna get rid of the, this green fill completely by clicking this X. Okay, great. And then the stroke paint, we wanna make sure that it is set to solid, which it is. Color doesn't matter, it can be black, green, blue, red. Um, so don't worry about that, any color will do. And then what we're, What's important to make this a cut line is we have to set um, the width of our stroke. So we go into this third tab, stroke style, and in order for it to be a cut line, it has to be 0 0.001 inches wide. So this width value here, we can see it's 0.101. That's too thick. Anything higher than 0 0.001 inches, um, the engraver will engrave instead of cut. Um, so make sure your units here are set to inches. And then just type in 0 0.001 for the width and press enter. Okay, and you can see I can't, I can no longer see my rectangle but if I zoom in, I can see it's there. It's just very faint because 0.001 inches is really, really thin. 
Now, if you're using the newest version of Inkscape, the good news is they have a special setting to make really thin lines like this visible no matter like if you're zoomed out or zoomed right in. So if you're on the latest version of Inkscape, um, which is Inkscape 1.0 at the time of this video, you can go into View, Display Mode, and then select Visible Hairlines. So I do that, I can see the width of this, um, of our stroke is still 0 0.001 inches. But we can now see it when, even if we're zoomed out, we can always see the line. So that makes it a lot easier to work with. Okay, so another thing you might want to do is play around with the curve of your corners. Um, so make them more or less rounded. So if you click on your rectangle and then click the rectangle or square tool, if you drag this little, click and drag on this little circle here, if we drag it down, it rounds our corners more. If we drag it right up to the top, we can see our corners are perfectly straight, 90 degree angles now. Now I usually recommend that you round your corners a little bit um, for most things so that they're not like really sharp and pointy. So let's go ahead and do that with this. Click and drag them down a little bit. That's kind of how it was before. So that is great. Now we might want to add some text and if you're new to Inkscape, I can go over adding text um, on your page. You just click on the text tool on the left hand side here, click on your page and we can type whatever you want like world's best dad. All right, and then if you want to change your font, you can go up to text, text and font. Pick a font from this list of fonts here. It's going to be different depending on what fonts you have installed on your computer. So this one looks fine enough. Um, you can see it gives me a preview here. Um, it won't change it on the page until you hit apply. So I'm going to click apply. Great. So we have world best dad. Now, hey, maybe we want to curve it around the fingers here. So let me show you one way of curving text. So first, what we have to do is change this from a, a text object to a regular path. So to do that, we just click um, path, object to path. And you'll notice now, this is no longer a text object. I can't edit it as text. It's just similar, it's, it's just a plain SVG now. But now that it is a path, we can add path effects to it. So if we go to path and path effects and it opens its path effect window, we don't have any effects currently. So we're going to add one. We're going to click this plus and then click on bend. Now that old menu there might look different if you're using an older version of Inkscape, but you should still be able to figure it out. Okay, so we have the bend effect. Now to control it, we're gonna click this icon here, edit on canvas, click that, and you see this little green line comes up. I'm gonna zoom in by holding control and scrolling my mouse wheel forward. And all you gotta do is click on this green line and then move it around to control the bend. Okay, so that, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna click back on my selection tool. I'm gonna close the path effects window. And we can do it like that. Let's maybe rotate this now. So if I click on my text a second time, you'll see these corner arrows will change 
to rounded corners mean it's, it's ready to rotate. So I can click and drag those. All right, and then maybe let's make it bigger. So I'm gonna hold control and drag that. And, you know, maybe here we'll just add in the year. You can put whatever you want. This is just, you know, kind of just to give you an example. Resize the box. Let's kind of move everything over a bit. And just place it however you want. Oh, see how it's snapping? When I'm trying to move this, it's and I get close to the hand, it's snapping to it. Um, you can turn that off. By, it's really annoying um, and you can go to file document properties and in this window at the top there is a snap tab click that and then drag this value down all the way to its lowest value which is one and then close that and that should stop it from snapping okay so I'm gonna place these just kind of eyeball them how I want and hey I think that's pretty good you can of course put whatever you want on the page but you know this just gives you all of the building blocks you need to um, make your handprint project one last thing we want to do actually is um, position this whole thing in the top right hand corner of our page and so if you click and select everything, um, what we can do is group this all together as one unit by going to object and group. That way, instead of selecting everything and moving it, I can just move it around as one grouping. And you can always ungroup it by going to object, ungroup. So we could, um, it's a good idea to position it in the corner of your page to um, save material. Otherwise, if it's down here, when the job starts, it's gonna you know, jump down and start the job here, wasting this material potentially. So we can place it in the corner. The other easy way, we, we can just get rid of all of this white space. If we go to File, Document Properties, um, and then under page, um, under custom size, go to resize page to content and just click this button that says resize page to drawing or selection. So when I click that, you can see it just automatically resizes my page to our content. And if you want, you can add in margins. So let's say you just want like a slight margin, you know, I could, Go here and add the top, left, right, and bottom margin and click that button again. And it will resize the page with a one millimeter margin. So now your entire project is, is all ready to go. We just have to save it. Um, and we probably should have been saving kind of along the way so we don't lose our progress. But anyways, you go um, to File and Save, and then type in a name for your file. You can see I already have a handprints file. So I'll call mine handprints2, and click Save. And that'll save it as an Inkscape SVG by default. Um, but if you want to bring in your file ready to print, we'll need the PDF. So you're going to go into File, Save As, and we're also going to save this as a PDF. So under Save As Type, click this drop down, and we're going to select Portable Document Format PDF, and click Save, keeping the file name the same. And then just click OK to any of this. And there you go, your file is all ready to go, saved in the correct format.
All right, thanks for watching this video, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And most importantly, I hope you have a great day. Thanks.